Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Happy Election Day. Welcome to our show. In this episode, Jill and I talk about payments, terms, those types of deals, and we're going to explain it. Payments, terms, deals explained. Awesome show, Jill. I know you love to collect payments, and so do I. Mm -hmm. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the LandAcademy.com online community. It's free. Yes, collecting payments is a lot more fun than giving payments. Than making than payments. Making payments. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a hint in life, all you young people. Collect payments. Don't, don't make make payments. Don't create new ones. <laughs> <laughs> Have zero and just collect lots of them. Okay, so here's the question Rod asked. I recorded a deed with a typo in the legal description, i.e. the seller's deed says unit six. I typed unit five. The county assessor sent me a letter saying, re-record the deed. If this has happened to you, how did you fix it? How did you handle it? Do I have to go back to the seller with a new deed and get it notarized? Go ahead. This is kind of your area. This happens, and it's okay. Mistakes this is, are fine. Oh, my gosh. This is one of the things. all the time. You know, and I've, I've, I've had some of our members said, oh, no, I just screwed up. What am I going to do? Like, ah, it's the end of the world. No, it's not. They just sent you a really nice letter saying, uh, oops, you know, you need, to, you need to redo this. And you know what? Oops. Mistakes happen, and that's why they're there. And they caught it, and you need to do it. What's interesting is, if, if you noticed, the recorder doesn't stop the process there. The, the assessor does. The recorder's job is to take in any document you really hand them, record it, stamp it, and hand it back, you know, kind of thing. And they Or they move it through the process, basically. Then it got to the assessor. Now, they're the ones that really do their work, and they go, all right, now let's look at this and make sure everything's right here. And before I flip the the uh, ownership into the new person's name, I want to make sure it's all right. And that's where they caught the unit five and the unit six typo. And that's why they politely sent it back to you saying, uh, oops. So very easy. And what have I have I had to do deeds and with people? Um, yeah, and I've learned a few things. So, uh, yes, you're going to have to have. Um, well, there's two ways. Jack's way that we do a lot of deeds now and I'll let Jack explain. Mm -hmm. But if you, it sounds like this was like a one page deed cause it wasn't real long legal description and the signature's right there. So if it's that kind of situation, yeah, there's nothing you can, you can't cross it off and initial it. You do need to have to redo the document and that's not hard. And there's no, there's no rush now, you know, that you've got the seller, they've cashed a check, everybody's cool with everything. So it's just a matter of you picking up the phone going, hi, Mr. Smith. I goofed. See that on there? Yeah, I put the wrong one. I'm going to send you a new one um, tomorrow, and you'll probably get it on Friday. So can you get to the bank next week and and uh, have them notarize that for you when you're in and then just send it back to me? Great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And, and then you send it in, and you're out. Another 20 bucks for the recording. Big deal. Yeah. I mean, there used to be this saying in real estate. I haven't heard it in a long time, and I'm glad. Oh, the recorder will just, re they would record toilet paper. <laughs> you know, and that's just not the case anymore. They won't record anything, especially in California. They really do look at it and they'll kick it back before it just gets into their system. So uh, you want to do it right in the, in the beginning anyway. But again, the, the huge takeaway here is I'm going to give you the real answer in a second. The huge takeaway here is mistakes happen. Mm -hmm. So what? Yeah. You just re record it. It's no big deal. Yeah. So what we do, and uh, we caught on about, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago about how to do this because I saw somebody else do it in the industry. You create, when you send a document, a single page deed, you make a single page deed two pages. You do all the information about the lot and the legal description and everything except the signature block and the notary block goes on the second page. So even if there's a ton of space on the first page and you could fit it all in there, we don't do that. We just say signature pages to follow. And so what happens is now you can regenerate, in this case, you could regenerate a bad legal description if you need to. And slap it on that original page, uh, if, if if in fact you send it out before it gets recorded, and uh, you know that works a lot of times. The other thing is that and just apply a little common sense here. Before this thing uh, goes out to the the notary, 
they have another set of eyes look at it. Yeah. If even if it's your fourteen year old kid, they they don't know what it is, but they know it's different. You and I, you know what's so funny? Yeah, I love this too. You know what, Jack? This is a good idea too. Do you remember back in the day, I can remember sitting at my little desk, yeah. oh my gosh, upstairs in my little office. I mean, it was little. I didn't have yeah. a lot of work room there. So I remember typing this legal description that was so long because yep. it had railroad names in there and all kinds of things in there that I'm I'm literally, I was like, I was like going loony looking at it. So Jack, I had you come in not and sit I there that like and it read it to me verbatim with space, comma, dash to make sure I got that silly legal description exactly right. It yep. was so funny. So there you go. And then I still would print it out. Sometimes I'll do that, I'd print it out and lay them next to each other, you know, and just make sure I got it right. <laughs> it was so funny. So, yeah, you want to really just take a look at that stuff before you, you, you don't want to rush through the paperwork piece of this business. Right. It's just going to cause lots of things. Jill doesn't get upset about stuff too often. Right. But one of the peeves that she has is uh, going too fast through his paperwork, things like this, and then having to redo the whole thing. It takes twice as long. You have to break the same phone calls again. You could be working on a new deal. So is it the end of the world? No, but just try it. Yeah. Just anybody, take a look at it. anybody who works for me knows my, my hang up on attention to detail <laughs> when it's especially like you just said jack spend an extra few minutes and make sure but and then like like and then can is it fixable heck yeah don't get hung up on it it's okay i don't know why this is i'm gonna get a ton of email but i'm gonna say it anyway anyway oh. boys rush through stuff they men do. do why is that and women really take their time and do it right yeah I know. there are not a ton of male escrow agents out there. There's a ton of women. Very. Oh, I've, I don't know if I've ever spoken to a male escrow agent. I don't think I have. Boy, that's an interesting. All the way up the chain. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> All the way I up the chain. I have questions now. Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. Oh. You know, the heads of, of huge escrow companies are, are women. Hmm. Or they can be or have been. Interesting. Met a lot of male lenders, though. What's that all about? <laughs> Boy, don't get me started on lenders. Okay. <laughs> Break this down. This is going to be a topic oh, for next no. week. Just why are lenders awful? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's the show about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you have a question or you want to be on the show, uh, reach out to either one of us on landacademy.com. Today's topic, this is the meat of the show, payments, terms, deals, explained. Go for it, Jill. Explain it. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we have a similar t uh, show this Friday scheduled, and uh, it's it's a little bit similar, but I wanted to explain how it works in great detail, um, and I think it's mostly because Jill and I have gotten several questions about, what's this What's this cash flow thing? Okay. It's land. What's cash flow from land? Exactly. So I want to I wanna talk about why we do it, which properties we do, when in your career to do it and how to do it. And we can do this here in just a few minutes. So why, well, why is this question even coming up? Well, cause someone came to me recently and said, okay, wait a minute. I keep hearing you guys on all your podcasts talk about flipping this, flipping that, flipping this, flipping that, just getting the cash and getting out. Well, you know, I think it's because we're talking to a lot of folks right now that are kind of new in their career and they need to build up their acquisition funds and we want them to get their feet wet and learn how to do transactions. So we're having them start with some smaller transactions, buy buy some properties, two, three hundred bucks, sell them for a thousand dollars, you know, fifteen hundred dollars, whatever it is. Let's keep doing that a few times. Do ten of those. Now you got your feet wet, you know about the whole process. Okay, now you're staring at twenty, thirty thousand dollars of an acquisition fund. Now we can start making some different decisions. Okay, so that's the why. And so and yes, this is a very big part of our world, the biggest part of our world. You want to get payments. That really is the big goal. You don't want to be flipping all the time and it's, gosh, that's tiring. You want residual payments coming in and you want to know you're going to wake up tomorrow and everything's just going to come in. You don't have to do anything. That's the whole point. Right. So the for the next step is, okay, which properties? And Jack, you're the, you're the best at that. Can you explain for us, th what properties you think are the best to do terms? Here's the op the model that we operate on, and I'm finding now that some of our members who have been with us for a while, um, that works really well for them too. 
You take larger acreage properties, and I'll give you an example, maybe a, a 40 acre to 160 acre, maybe even a 320 acre property that you're buying for $100 or less out west here. $100 a, a, an acre or less. So a 40 is 4,000 and an 80 is 8, a, a 320 is, is 32,000. And you double your money on it. You sell it for cash. So on a 40, you sell it for 8 or 12 or 16. And it, 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 you get the picture. And it's like Jill said. So now you've done four or five or eight or 10 of these deals. You know, you've got some money in the bank, 30 to 50,000 bucks, maybe more. Then you take that money and you go buy a bunch of five acre properties or 10 acre properties for 500 or 1,000 bucks each. You've, you've long made up your initial investment. This is all while you're still working, you know, you still have a job. You're still working at your regular job. So you take those properties, you sell them for $100 down and $100 a month. And there's a lot. It's, there's a lot to buy. If you have $30,000 that you've generated from cash sales, you can go buy 60 properties at 500 bucks each. If you turn all of those 60 properties into a six, uh, $100 revenue stream per month, it's six grand. You're well on your way. And like Jill always says, you know, let's just, I, I'm, a, I'm Mr. Big Picture. She's like, yeah, let's do one deal at a time here. $100, first month's $100, bucks, second, month, uh, second month $200, and pretty soon in about five years, you've, you've got, you know, $10,000 a month income stream. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, if you can't live off of 10000 bucks a month, there's a different radio show for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could be just okay with that. Now, let's think about this. You're not doing anything, too, by the way. So like so that just Jack covered you know which ones and we covered on you know what in your career and then the last thing is really how to do it uh, the properties that we really work with are in the for payments our our goal is we don't you don't have to put the deed in someone's name it's kind of a contract you're just seller financing um, and you want to charge a percentage. An APR. We hadn't we hadn't talked about that. Jack's the pro at this, so I'm gonna let Jack take that. Well, I mean, this is a little bit sort of off topic, and it gets complicated. So I don't want to make it sound way more complicated than it is, because it's once you just do it once, you get it. You there's two ways to sell property on terms: uh, a land contract, which is just a, it's exactly what it is. It's a contract between two people, or a deed of trust, and they're called all kinds of different stuff all over the country. Every time I talk about this, I get email. Oh, it's called this over here. It's called this over here. Okay. There's two basic concepts. <laughs> One gets recorded right when the deal gets done. Right when the deal gets signed, uh, it gets recorded with an escrow agent, and they kind of take it from there. They take a little bit of the money every month that gets spent. They, they manage the whole thing for you. The least complicated way is the land contract way, and that's kind of what we teach. And each state is very different. Seth Williams, his whole, uh, his whole um, blog this, for this week is this topic. And he set out, this is what he said. He set out and said, he set out to do a 50 state manual. And he said, I've been working on this for a really long time. And, and it's, it's an insurmountable of information oh, to get. He said, yeah. I, I can't do it. Yeah. So whatever state you're looking to do this in, please research it before you do it. Some states are real simple. Some states not so simple. Right. You know, but there are very detailed person, people in our group and everywhere that mm -hmm. love the not simple. It keeps all the competition out. It does. And the whole thing. So They seek it out. It's yeah. awesome. Easier is not better. It's true. Most of the time. Sometimes I like them. I, I'm one of those weirdos, too, that I'm like, you know what? Bring it. I'll take that Me challenge. Too. I'm going to figure it out. And I know that half the people or more than half the people will not figure this out. Yay. I win. We have a member who's <laughs> really, really good at maps. So he specifically seeks out counties that are so rural and so like kind of behind the times that they don't have a GIS or any IT solution. Yeah. And no and one he else does can, great. No, no one's one ever done anything. Out. He buys tons and tons <laughs> yeah. of property there because it's where he lives. Yeah. And he can just go in and look at the maps on the wall and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> he take pictures. It's literally takes pictures of plat maps. Brilliant. And stuff. Yeah. See, I think it is too. I love it. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information, that's me, and inspiration, that's me, to get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property and vote for half of what it's worth <laughs> and oh sell it immediately. It's vote day. It is. You're not alone in your voting or real estate <laughs> ambition. You're not alone in this presidential nuttiness yes. ambition. In fact, we're all in this together. We are. This is now the after show. 
in our politics ambition. Oh what was that? What was that poll we saw over the weekend? They were r- ranking this election over all the last several elections and just how off track it's got. Yeah. I mean, it was like something like 70% of the people all said that this is the craziest, craziest we've ever seen it. Yes. And just, just the, uh, either side. I don't care. Exactly. I don't care which side you're on. It's yeah. Everybody. I, I have noticed that no matter who I speak about with this, I don't care which side they're on. And I, I do not have a side for the record. Right. It's just, we all agree. You know it's what, kooks. You know what? It it bums me out that it works this way. Because you know, how about, when you're playing a sport and you're playing a team that's better than you, often the, you guys, you rally and you rise up to their level. This is great. What's frustrating is you can also dumb down to different levels. So it's kind of it's kind of like, ugh, you know, it's got a little crazy. Exactly. So, but today's the day. I'm excited it's going to be over. I'm excited it's going to be over. That's, That's all. the super good news. You know what the greatest part is too, Jack? Because we were in a hotel this weekend um, that Jack and I, because we do not have a TV here in California, have not been subjected to all of the commercials that the rest of the world has been dealing with. So we got a little glimpse of them this weekend. And I'm like, oh boy, turn that <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Right? Just there's so much negative hate, you know? Come on. Exactly. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. Let's go buy some. We, we are, are Jack and Jill, and, Jill, and this, this was, was the Cash Flow from Land, land show. show. We are the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. <laughs>